this is the machine from which you buy tickets for your train you select the train you want to go on and then select the destination you can also sort it from a to z once you select the destination uh, the number of tickets and the amount will pop up like this and then you can make the payment by using cash or card if you put a higher denomination note you will receive the change back along with the tickets in this slot here Hi guys. Hi guys. We are at Batu Caves now. It was a very early morning start to the day, and this is our first day in Kuala Lumpur. So, just to explain this a little better, we actually came here a couple of days ago. Um, one of uh, one of these very nice couples yeah. on Instagram who has been following along on our journey. When they learned that we're coming to Malaysia, they reached out and said, "You know, you should definitely come stay with us." And we have never done this before. It's our first time ever, and we decided to just go for it. <laughs> and we'll introduce you to them at the end of this video. But right now, we're at Batu Caves. You can already see the colorful steps behind us. That's what this is famous for. It's one of the most uh, important Hindu temple here, which is known, of course, for its colorful steps and the big Murugan statue. So this Murugan temple is actually inside a cave, and there's also a waterfall inside it. That's what I'm excited for. Let's just go climb those colorful steps and see how the temple is. Temple is so popular here with the pilgrims and tourists that. Uh, you know, in all of the Tamil world, which means in Tamil Nadu, in India, as well as here, it's the sixth most or seventh most important temple. There are six in India, and there are four here in Malaysia, and this is the most important in Malaysia. And to reflect how important this is, the the Malay government has actually built a metro line directly to the temple itself. So that's the train we got on this morning and came here. So now we go inside, check out the temple, and Shishira is already feeling the heat of the sun. Yeah, and there are already so many buses which just arrived. It's gonna get crowded. Oh yeah, so let's, let's go get fast. going. Look what we found! It's Morugan, and it's now so we're crazy. here at Batu Caves. Such a colorful temple here. A bunch of wild monkeys just attacking people. And so many pigeons around. They're not even flying when I walk beside them. It's so yeah. scary. So the rainbow staircase is what is most popular here. So we're looking right at that. It feels uh, a little surreal because we've always seen it on the internet, and today we are seeing it in person. It's beautiful. Yeah. And I don't know how tall the Murugan statue is here, though. It seems pretty big. So this temple actually dates back to the late 1890s when the man who discovered this cave thought it resembled the shape of a veil. A veil is that that weapon that Murugan uses. So the cave, because it was shaped like that, they decided to consecrate it with a an idol and built a temple inside. The 
biggest Tamil festival, Thai Pusam, is celebrated here, and it's usually yeah. in late January or early Feb. So we just missed it. Yeah, there's but, a procession or something, right? But we heard that there's this massive celebration here in Batu Caves. It's the biggest in all of Malaysia, and the procession for this festival begins in Kuala Lumpur. So this is at least like 20 kilometers away, and over eight hours, an entire devotees line, a big procession begins from Mahamariamman Temple in the central of Kuala Lumpur all the way till here and then these guys apparently they pierce their mouth with uh, metal rods representing the Murugan's veil and then they, they do this thing and they make these vows and you know these prayers and of course the celebration is huge but to think that they are able to do this and sustain it for so many hours is just this happens in India also it's not just that it happens here but we've never actually seen it we learnt about it when we when we read online about what happens here during that festival. These limestones which form the Batu Caves are said to be around 400 million years old. Can you believe that? The cave opens up here and you can see the sky from inside here and this water trickling down on these walls of the caves because of which there are so many plants growing on the walls and it looks so nice. What are we doing now? I'm so hungry. Let's go eat. We have just ordered a breakfast set meal and we have got masala dosa which is like rice pancake. We have got uh, idli which is rice cake and we have got vada which is like crispy donut. donut. <laughs> and with that we have got two types of chutneys which are like coconut sauces and we have got sambar which is like a curry sauce. Yes. the National Mosque of Malaysia but it's closed so we have to turn back to somewhere else but I see a juice shop just opposite to the mosque yeah I think we should grab a juice yeah that it's so hot yeah but it makes it with ice Square trying to squeeze out all the water from the ice of our juice. Yeah. It's so hot. Right now it's, it's a, right now it's around 2 p.m. and we are going slower than expected. We thought by now we'd be in uh, the next place and then having lunch or something. But right now the place where we are though is actually very interesting. We are at Mardeka Square. This is uh, where the proclamation of independence happened. 31st August 1957 that's when Malaysia declared independence from the British Union uh, and this is the exact same place where the first Malaysian flag was hoisted 
so it's like their very special place you could say it's almost like red fort for india and um, and this is also where the independence day parade happens yeah. there's a big flag hoisting ceremony that takes place a parade and also there's this really big uh, independence flag pole behind us apparently that's the icon of this square on our right side we can see um, one of these old buildings apparently this was called as the what did i say it was called now need that's all the history uh, sultan reading. abdul samad so right in front of us is sultan abdul samad building it's it's so cool to look at it because it's got yeah. this very old half colonial half malay influence of architecture and it's really pretty to see uh, also we learned that that's now the the government office for the ministry of information and culture so they continue to maintain it as it is also there is a victoria fountain also we can see the twin towers from here it's shining with the on the famous Petaling Street Market which is in the heart of Chinatown so there are so many different things looks like you can buy a fake Rolex for just <laughs> a few ringgit <laughs> Yeah. And the entire roof is covered with these lanterns, and it looks really pretty. So you get a lot of things over here. The prices aren't the friendliest because they're on the higher side, apparently. But, But the variety, a lot of variety. Yeah, the variety is what draws people here. <laughs> So we just got some incredibly famous soy milk which is like supposedly the biggest attraction here on Petaling Street and now I'll give it a go. Good old soy milk, nice and cold. So that was the Mahamariamman temple and one thing we haven't figured out is why is it that Mahamariamman temples are always in Chinatown in Southeast Asia like this is not even the first one in Singapore Mahamariamman temple is in Chinatown i think even in where is and even here and then it's even in uh, penang dodge down yeah even in penang mahamariamman temple is just on the outside of chinatown so it's a little strange like if you know why do let us know because we are very curious <laughs> the temple itself is very beautiful it's a very yeah. old temple there's uh, uh, mariamma inside who is like a uh, avatar of kali of durga of parvati uh, the wife of shiva so mm -hmm. definitely an important goddess but they are doing some kind of renovation work so we couldn't really see the temple's colors in all of its glory like how we saw today morning at uh, batu caves but now we see a couple of gokl buses running around here and there i think we'll hop on one and go around the city Next station, Bangkok. 
Spicy and really flavorful. I just love it. How do you feel vegetarian? Yeah. Mm. You should taste it. Also, what is little bonda and some roti chana? This is vegetarian. Yes, roti chana, dal, or I'm not sure. And then we have one lima ice, which is lemon, lemon juice. Okay guys, we'll catch you again inside. We'll uh, meet up with those new friends we were talking about earlier today. I like how it smells. Green was snake. Now we have to go to Ask Sajaya. So take the Kutra Hive Street and stop. So what is this called? So basically this is a very vegan version of the Cantonese Emi. My guests are very vegan. So I had to come up with a new recipe. <laughs> and it's somewhat along the same lines. But let's hear, hear your opinions about it. That's about it. I hope it's like edible. <laughs> Oh, it smells really good and it's so colourful. It's a crispy noodle. Yeah. Yeah. So the noodles, the crispy noodles are known as emi noodles. A lot of prawns and chicken and whatever you decide. But since we are making a very vegan version today, it looks a little different and tastes a lot different, I'm sure. It's also dark. Very crunchy because of the noodles. And I really like the sauce in which it is prepared and the veggies are giving nice burst of flavor. No, oh, I liked it. I loved it. Blow this up? No, you don't have to really blow oh, okay, okay, okay. Happy anniversary. <laughs> Both of you. <laughs> Thank you so Thank much. You so much. The cake Thank is so you. yum. Yeah. Let's cut three pieces and all of us we have together. First for the lovely couple who came. No, for you guys. No, feed him. No, feed him. Feed him. No, no, feed him. <laughs> no, it's your mm. turn. Thank you. Come, 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 come. Cheers. 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 Cheers.